Hello team, Greeks for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nish Kumar Singh and you are watching ISTQB Foundation series. As told earlier, we are moving to the chapter 6, uh, second topic and this is the last topic of this series and we will be closing off uh, the entire curriculum of the 2018 ISTQB Foundation here in this tutorial. But we'll be having one more tutorial that is about sample questions on the chapter 6. So... The, this particular topic will be divided into three segments that is like what is the factors to be considered before selecting a tool for the organization by the manager. Of course, there are certain factors to be taken care of before you can really look forward to procure a tool for the organization. On the other side, we'll be talking about once the tool is selected, how do you start with a pilot project and what are the objectives of the pilot project uh, to be considered and how does it help you to measure the effectiveness of the tool. And at the end, of course, uh, even after your pilot uh, project is successful, what other factors to be considered throughout the projects and maybe later within the organization. So let's start with the first option here when you're talking about the main principles for tool selection, which is a core responsibility of the test manager uh, who is responsible for selecting a tool for the organization to be considering these factors before selecting a tool. Assessment of the maturity of the organization, its strengths and weaknesses. Generally, we talk about the maturity of the organization in terms of do you have a mature test process or not where the tool can be accommodated well. If in case your process is not predetermined or you do not have a well-mature process, of course, the tool will not fit because the necessity of the tool is about having a process where the data is prepared according to the situations in the cycle and these cycles can accommodate your tool. So remember that the tool will never change for you. It's just that you have to change for the tool. And you also look forward in case there is a provision to modify your process just to make sure that the tool can be accommodated within the process. So a test manager should look into that and consider that as a factor before evaluating a tool. Understanding of the technologies used by the test objects, uh, generally just in terms of the platform what you want to test. So it's not mandatory that all the tools what you see in the market are eligible to support any type of uh, platform within the organization or within the technological world. Like for example, we have Sybil, Civilorelite, Java, Flex, uh, mobile applications. So we, we just need to make sure that what kind of application are you testing and does the tool really going to support that or not. And just create a filter criteria so that you can only target those particular tools which would help you to uh, assist with this particular set of requirement. So having the uh, clear set of requirements in terms of uh, the criteria, that is it for the regression testing, functional testing, non-functional testing, if non-functional testing, what kind of non-functional testing are you looking at, and so that it makes more easier and effective evaluation when you start looking at the tools. Consideration of whether or not the tool will be available for free trial period, not all the tools are available in terms of a free trial period for evaluation. Sometimes the tools are chargeable when you talk about the commercial tools. So you need to look forward. The reason is you do not want to invest for conducting a proof of concept, which should be done free of cost. So you look forward that if the tool will be available for a trial period or not, so that you can conduct an evaluation. Evaluation of the vendor, as we just uh, understood in the previous tutorial that one of the risks is about uh, understanding the vendor as well, that how strong the vendor is, whether it will shut down the office tomorrow after procuring the tool or do they really have a good support service or not. So that would be really important to be taken into consideration. And at the same time, also you consider that if their support services are chargeable because time and cost would be equally measured in terms of procuring a tool. Identification of any internal requirements like coaching and mentoring for the use of the tool. It's not mandatory that your team will be really highly skilled so that they can adopt the new tool as soon as you get it. <clears throat> Sometimes it is also possible that you might have to take care of uh, a new training uh, to be organized for the team members to make use of uh, the tool in a very effective and efficient way. Uh, consideration of pros and cons of various licensing model. Uh, generally, when you talk about licensing model, of course, uh, you have to differentiate between that what kind of open source tools we have and what kind of commercial tools we have. If it is open source, what kind be the time taken in terms of money to configure and set it up as the environment is required for the open source tools? 
but commercial comes with a user-friendly navigational panel or user interface but requires a cost to be invested. So we just measure those things and at the same time you can also look for the licensing model where sometime it is seat license, concurrent license and many other factors which we would take some more time to understand. But just remember that license uh, parameters are also one of the constraints to be selected before moving into the tool. Uh, estimation of the cost-benefit ratio, which is another aspect which is quite important to be taken care of in terms of that, whether what is that we are going to invest and what is that we are going to achieve. If you are still doing the same cost, what you are doing without the tool, there's no point having a new thing involved in the process. Because, of course, it will invite some additional costs like training and mentoring and maintenance of the tool. So you do not go with any such tool which is having a negative cost-benefit ratio compared to a positive one. The next section is about a pilot project, but of course, you would conduct a proof of concept before uh, selecting the tool for the organization. So generally, once you consider all the factors, you start evaluating the tools, which is called as the proof of concept, where you check against your clear requirements that what is the requirement and whether the tool can really help you with that or not. And uh, evaluation will be only to the point based on the requirements what you have specified that okay is it for regression is it for performance is it for security and just quickly interact with the tool and see that whether it is capable of doing this activity or not but once the POC is over and your POC goes positive about any particular tool you will take up and procure the tool for a particular project and you call it as pilot project where generally pilot project has certain objectives like Gaining in-depth knowledge about the tool, where you roll out the tool to one of the project and ask them to use it at the real-time environment from end-to-end -end and see that how tool is actually going to benefit you at the ground level. Because so far we have just estimated things, but now we are trying to execute it. Evaluating how the tool fits with the existing process, whether your process is really highly mature or whatever stage you are at, whether it is going to fit into that process or not, or if required, whether you would need to change your process and uh, does the organization allow you to modify the process or not. Deciding on standard ways of using, managing, storing and maintaining the tool and the test assets. Generally, we, as we make it on use in the real-time environment, we understand that how the assets will be managed, how will you version control them, how do you store the data for this tool, what would be the external resources which will be required to be maintained and many other things. Assessing whether the benefits will be achieved at the reasonable cost or not. That means whether we'll be having more recurring cost compared to the fixed deposits initially when you procure the tool. Because if you have mm, more recurring cost involved in the entire process, then of course it's going to be expensive compared to the ordinary one. Understanding the matrices that we wish, with, uh, wish the tool to collect and report and configuring the tool to ensure these matrices can be captured and reported. So generally some matrices are used in terms of tool matrix, that how the tool is effective, what data it can generate, what reports it can do, give to you, what KPIs it can capture, and so on. So from the point of pilot project, you also consider this as one of the parameters to be considered to decide on how it will be effective enough to determine some of the uh, indicators as well as reports to help you measure the effectiveness of the tool. Even in case the pilot project goes successful, okay, so at any point of time the pilot project goes really successful, you still do not roll out the tool to the entire organization at the same time because you never know that maybe one project would have given you a very positive sign of using the tool and benefits, but not mandatorily all other projects would give you the same. So we just make sure that we have certain factors to be considered even after the pilot project succeeds and we take care of them throughout the uh, organization. For example, rolling out the tool to the rest of the organization incrementally, adapting and improving processes to fit the use of the tool, like improvising your process so that if you find during the pilot project the process was unable to adopt the tool, then you look forward to modify it because tool will not change for you. Providing training, coaching, and mentoring for the tool users, of course, consistent support is equally important and even sometimes ramp up. Defining guidelines for the use of the tool, just like any other product, you also define usage guidelines for this tool, which will help them to make use of it effectively. Implementing a way to gather usage information from the actual use, that is to monitor the tool use and the benefits. 
as you mentioned, you come to know that whether it's time to change the tool or the tool is still beneficial to us. Providing support to the users for a given tool and gathering lessons learned from all the users. That would generally help you to understand that how things are going on and whether the tool is still resourceful to us or it is going to be cost effective or not. So that's all from here team. This is the last topic of this particular chapter as well as this particular series and here we just call it off. Uh, so we'll be having one more tutorial in this series to wind it up with that is the sample questions on chapter 6. So stay tuned for that and we'll be getting started with another tutorial that I'll let you know in the last tutorial of the sample questions that what we will be getting started with next one and when. So if you have not subscribed to the channel please subscribe I'll be still coming with a lot of the certification programs and technical tools to be dealt with and uh, that would be quite helpful for you to work in the environment. Keep learning, keep exploring. In case you get stuck anywhere, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to assist you with anything what you would need. So, till then, yeah, keep learning. I'll be there to assist you with that. Happy learning team. Take care.